Yes. Okay. So if you don't know what Anki is, and maybe you do, maybe you don't, depending on who's listening to this, essentially the idea here is we provide API authentication um, for being able to scale a user-facing API. Uh, we provide ways to create keys, verify keys, manage your keys, um, and essentially you can do it in seconds. We're an API first company, so I won't be showing the API today just because I'm on a machine that doesn't have any development stuff on it. Uh, it's just my content creation machine, but we can show most of it off in the dashboard anyway. Um, so once you sign up for an account, you'll get dropped into this kind of screen right here. And this is where what we call a workspace. Now, workspace can either be a personal account or it can be for your businesses. As you can see, I have many different businesses uh, that I've tested over the, the uh, months. Um, and an API is essentially a way for you to group API keys together. So this could be production, this could be test, this could be staging, or it could be an API, right? It could be like, um, this one is AI fun. So that could be a route that you have for your company. Um, and then looking inside your APIs, so if we load this API up, uh, we give you out of the gate essentially ways to look at how the keys are performing, what you've done in the month that you're currently in, and how those uh, verifications work. So we have basically three real types of uh, verifications that could potentially happen. One is what you really want, a successful verification. This just means that we verify the key and the key is happy. Um, it's valid, it's enabled, all those kinds of things. Uh, then we have rate limited and usage exceeded. So you could actually see if someone's maybe potentially abusing your API. Um, and then the same for active keys. We show you how active your keys are over the last seven days, and you can push this all the way out to the last three months. Um, with this, essentially the idea here is we only actually charge you for successful verifications. And anything else that happens, so if it's rate limited, it doesn't exist, it's disabled, uh, the usage is exceeded, it's expired, all those things we actually we won't charge you for. So that's how the usage base works. Um, and then you can essentially play with your keys in here. Um, all of the stuff that you see in the UI, you can do in the API. So as you can see here, all these keys are enabled. None of them really have any of these features, but I'll show those features off. Um, and then you can see when they were created by, who owns it, what the name potentially of the key is, um, et cetera. So when you create a key in Unkey, essentially you have um, four advanced usage and then just the standard stuff. So a prefix can be anything to make it easier to identify. So maybe you just do prod um, and we'll underscore it and then put the key on top. Uh, then you have an owner, which can be anything. Maybe it's from your authentication uh, provider. So maybe it's user XXXXX, you know, like some sort of user ID that you can easily identify this owner as. And then the name is just the name of the actual key itself. Um, and then you can add all of these custom things. So for example, limited usage, you can add that this key can only be used 100 times. And then you have the option to actually refill this automatically. So for example, I could go in here and say every day add 10, and that will refill 10 to this key. And when you click create, we give you the key here, which I'll just show. Uh, this is the key prod underscore and then whatever our key is. Uh, we only show you this once and there's no way to retrieve this key. So once you've uh, issued it, whether that's through your own UI or you're just manually giving this to a user, that's the last time you'll ever see the key. So they need to be stored um, somewhere safe or just pass it on to your user and your user can have it um, as is. And so this essentially is how we verify any key in our application. Uh, what we do uh, is you curl this endpoint with your key and we'll tell you whether or not it is valid or not. And I can technically show this using RecBin really quick. Don't do this in production. Uh, but essentially what we do here uh, is we'll send the key down. And when we run this, uh, maybe not. Maybe it won't work. Ah, there we go. Uh, you'll get this back here, which is the key itself. Is it valid? And you can check against that. And then the owner ID, any metadata associated with the key, and how many remaining it has left. So right now it has 99. So if this user uses it another 99 times, the key will then become invalid 
and you'll get a response back that says usage exceeded. Um, the idea here is these are all globally distributed keys. So regardless to where the user is, you'll get the same minimal latency from start to finish. Uh, and then uh, we cache it really heavily. So even when you get the key for the first time, it should just be as fast. Now, if we go here and look at created at, and this one is our latest one here from Thursday, you can see it has 99 remaining. It has a daily refill amount and the user ID is here. And then you get the options to do a bunch of different things. So if we go to details here, we can see when it was last used, success rate, rate limited usage exceeded, when the verification was, where the user agent was, what the IP address was, what the region was, all those things uh, are provided. And then you can actually update these keys. So through the API, which I'll show in the docs in a second, you can update these keys um, and also through the UI. So if you decide that remaining is no longer required, you can just disable it, hit save. And now this is no longer on and this key can be used however many times you want and vice versa, you can enable it and then set that to whatever you may need. Um, the idea here is that we want you to be able to essentially handle any scenario at any point without having to reissue a key or make some changes in your database to make this work. Um, on top of that, uh, we have this new audit logging system, which is just new. It tells you uh, who's creating keys, when they were created, um, all those kinds of things so that you can uh, look at these and say, okay, uh, this API has been created, who created it? Uh, and maybe you can go and ask them why. Uh, and that's obviously internal. Uh, you can ignore the success thing here. That's just for me. Um, and then that, that's essentially it. And then we have a bunch of stuff in here for things like if you want Teams uh, on a non-personal account, you can invite users. Root keys are essentially what drives all the resources. So when you create a root key for the first time, you can now actually create keys via our API. Um, and then you can use that to update keys, delete keys, revoke keys, all those essential pieces that you might need. Um, and then I can just quickly talk about the docs because the docs are probably gonna be uh, pretty important here. Um, so if we go to our API reference here, you can see that we have um, the ways you can actually test this in the documentation if you so wish, but it shows you uh, in all different languages how to expect this um, using just the straight HTTP requests um, and what is required and what is not. And then we have libraries in some of your favorite um, languages, whether it's TypeScript. Uh, we have a TypeScript one, which is an official SDK that we built. Same with the Hono package here. So if you're a Hono fan, you can use this to do middleware verifications. And then our um, contributors such as Python, Elixir, Go, Nuxt, Rest, Spring Boot are all things that you can uh, use and not have to worry about having to turn HTTP requests into the language that you choose. Of course, we have an open API spec, so that makes it fairly easy. Um, if there's one that's not available, you can use that to, to drive this information. And then on top of that, if you're interested in contributing, we have uh, a guide here that shows you how to set up everything in our uh, application. It tells you what's required and then the rest of the third party services are just optional. We show you how to do versioning. We show you how to add some features if you want um, what we do every day. And that's essentially Unki uh, in a nutshell. Uh, and we have a bunch of different features that I probably should just go through real quick. Uh, so we offer you rate limiting. Uh, we offer it in two ways. First way is like local, so it's super fast and on the edge. And then we have this global consistency version. So if you're really conscious about having a strict rate limiting and you're not too concerned, um, if you're really concerned about how it, and it should never be exceeded, you can use this uh, global version which adds uh, latency to our verifications because we have to go and check our database every single time. But the fast um, on the local side, which is edge everywhere, it will be much, much faster. Temporary keys, which is essentially a way for you to just say, hey, it expires at this time. So if you need a monthly or a weekly key or some variant of that, we can offer that out as a way to basically expire the key. Remaining is what I showed you already, which is essentially just like, hey, 100 times, uh, and that will be how many times you can use it. 
Great for things like AI, if you need to purchase like 100 uses of some sort of AI API, uh, you can use that. Obviously, refill is part of this remaining feature. And then the analytics, we can do both in the UI now, and also we do have an endpoint. And then IP whitelisting, if you need a specific set of IPs uh, that you can run against, we can have that in here, and that will be available. And then Q, uh, we can revoke the key in a couple of ways. You can disable it temporarily. You can delete the key. Um, but we want to make sure that you know that it could take up to 60 seconds to invalidate because we have to basically purge the cache from our um, durable objects. Um, and then we do have a Vercel integration. If you are using Vercel to deploy your uh, application, uh, you can do that too. Um, and that's it. That's Unkey uh, really, really quickly in a elevator pitch style. Wow. <laughs> very, very cool. Uh, I, I especially like how like all these industry standard features like refilling and then rate limiting, audit logging and analytics like come together in a single package. I love it. And I also really like the fact that um, your API keys are distributed globally. That should bring the latency really down, right? Like, do you yeah, guys yeah, I'll, make I'll any average, measurements on that? Yeah, our average latency like in most of the globe is under 30 milliseconds. Uh, most places it's even under 10 milliseconds. So it's like really, really fast. Um, thanks to Cloudflare, uh, who, who, where our workers are. Um, but yeah, we can, we our our biggest concern was making sure we never add latency to your application. Cause when you build an API key system, maybe internally for the first time, it's not a concern. Like you don't care about global distribution until you get a customer that's in Germany. And now every time they use your API key, their application takes, you know, a full 30 seconds to run one request or whatever it might be, because you've got to go from Germany to US East, US East does all the processing, comes back and then sends it down. Um, and, and we've managed to reduce that latency right down so that you never have to worry about that regardless to where your customer is. That's amazing. Super cool. That was awesome. And uh, thank you so much for the demo. And maybe we can close the interview with uh, showing the Anki repo on GitHub. Yeah, so you can find our Anki repo at unkeyed slash Anki. Uh, this is the main repo where all the work is done. You can look through it. You can see how we're doing all these cool things. Uh, feel free to grab an issue, uh, look at some issues, create issues, et cetera, et cetera. If you're interested in examples, we actually have a new example repo here, which has a bunch of different examples in it from uh, AI billing, how to make a CLI, how to use Anki with Clerk or Superbase functions. We have a bunch of stuff in there to make it as easy as possible for you to essentially get started with Anki and use it uh, for yourself. Thank you. <laughs>